um, free response question number one on form A from the AP Chemistry exam. Just going to work this one and also going to work out the one from 2004A as long as my time doesn't go too crazy. If, it, if the time does get too big, then I'll just make a part two. So on this first one, we have a saturated solution prepared by adding excess PBI2, yada, yada, yada. Y'all can read that. The first part of this is just to simply write the equilibrium constant expression for this equation. They're nice enough to give you the equation. And so whenever you're doing an equilibrium expression dealing with KSP, and you know that this is a KSP because, oh, we got the word solubility right there. We got some KSP going on down there. You know that solids and liquids are never included in a equilibrium constant expression, only aqueous and uh, gases. So the equilibrium constant expression for KSP is just, that is a K, I swear, is just going to be the concentration of the reactant, or the products, which in this case is lead and iodine. Now, because it's a 1 to 2 mole ratio, this 2 coefficient becomes iodine squared. So that is your equilibrium constant expression for this particular equation. And then it says calculate the molar concentration of iodine in the solution. Well, back up in here, it said the concentration of the lead ion in the saturated solution, so saturated solution means once it's reached equilibrium, is found to be 1.3 times 10 to the negative third molar. Well, lead and iodine in an equilibrium situation will have a 1 to 2 ratio. So if lead is 1.3 times 10 to the negative 3, well then the concentration of iodine is going to be equal to 2 times the concentration of lead. And I know it seems unnecessary to write this part, but go ahead and write this because sometimes they'll give you a point just for simply stating the stoichiometry that's between the two compounds that you're dealing with, or in this case the two ions. And so that's going to be uh, 2.6 times 10 to the negative 3 molar. And then calculate the value of the equilibrium constant. Well, here is the lead ion concentration. Here is the iodine ion concentration. So we just simply plug those in to our uh, equilibrium constant expression. So I'm going to write that up here. Ksp is equal to, so the lead was... 1.3 times 10 to the negative 3. And iodine, 2.6 times, I'll just put an E, times 10 to the negative 3, and that was squared, because iodine is squared because it has a coefficient of 2. And you plug this into your nifty little calculator, and you end up with 8.8 .8 times 10 to the negative 9. Pretty sure we're going to need this again soon. Now, looking at B, a saturated solution is prepared by adding solid lead iodide to distilled water to form two liters of solution at 25 degrees Celsius. What are the molar concentrations of lead and iodine in that solution? And justify your answer. Well, you might be thinking, oh, okay, well, up here I had one liter, down here I have two liters, so then the concentration must be twice what I had up here and that would be incorrect thinking. And the reason for that is because molarity is moles per liter. So it doesn't matter if you have one mole or two moles or a hundred bajillion gajillion mole or liters. It doesn't matter, sorry, I said that wrong. It doesn't matter if you have one liter or two liters or a billion liters. All that matters is that the number of moles per liter is the same. So if this question asked, uh, how many moles would you have in two liters of solution, then yes, it would be different than what you have up here. But since it just simply asked for the concentration, it's going to be the same. So the concentrations will be the same because molarities and KSP are not dependent on volume. So then moving on to C. Solid sodium iodide is added to a saturated solution of the lead iodide at 25 degrees Celsius. This is important because it means that KSP doesn't change. If, if this was a different temperature, then we would actually have to deal with a different uh, KSP instead of that guy. Um, so assuming that the volume of the solution does not change, 
does the molar concentration of lead increase, decrease, or remain the same? And then justify your answer. There's actually two ways that we can do this. The first way is by using Le Chatelier's and qualitatively saying what's going to happen. So if we are at equilibrium, that means we have still mostly lead iodide solid, a little bit of lead ion, and a little bit of iodide ion. And if you add sodium iodide, sodium iodide is going to completely ionize because it is a soluble salt into the sodium ion and the iodide ion. And if you remember from your buffers notes, this is a little bit of a common ion going on here. We don't really care about sodium because sodium is not in our original equation, um, but the iodide is. And so if you increase the amount of the iodide ion, according to Le Chatelier, the reaction is going to shift to use up that iodide that was added, and so it will shift to the left, producing more of the solid and causing the amount of lead ion to go down. That's according to Le Chatelier. Now the other way that you could calculate it, or to do it quantitatively, is to calculate Q. If you remember, Q is the same as K, except instead of it being equilibrium concentrations, it's what the concentrations are right now. And so if we had in this case, Q would be the concentration of lead ion, which would still be the same, but the concentration of the iodide ion, since we added sodium iodide, it would be higher. So I'll just mark that with an increase. I know that doesn't look right, but. Uh, and so if the I, iodide ion concentration increases, then that means Q is going to go up because this is just multiplied together. And remember, whenever you put K and Q in alphabetical order, in this case, Q is going to be greater than K, and that will show you the direction of the shift. So when Q is greater than K, then reactants are favored, and the concentration of lead, again, will go down. So it's just two different ways of explaining the same thing. So now, moving on to D. And uh, they were talking up here about the solubility of salts of lead and barium. Well, we're done with lead, moving on to barium. And in fact, I am going to clean some stuff up here. Let's see here. Get everything cleaned up. Okay, I can't actually clean that up without messing up my question behind it. So I'm just going to leave that there and I'll switch colors so it makes it a little easier to read. So, okay, the value of KSP for the salt barium chromate is 1.2 times 10 to negative 10. When a 500 mL sample of that molar barium nitrate is added to a 500 mL of that molarity sodium chromate, no precipitate is observed. Um, I'm assuming this is probably going to be important in a minute. So I says, assuming that volumes are additive, so the 500 mL and 500 mL add together to make one liter, calculate the molar concentrations of barium and chromate ion in the one liter of solution. Well, this is pretty easy to do once you know what it is that you need to do. Well, we have a volume and we have a molarity of the barium nitrate. And barium nitrate is going to ionize completely because it is a soluble salt into the barium ion, which we care about and two nitrate ions, which we really couldn't care less about uh, because we're looking for the ions contained in barium chromate. So since this is a one to one ratio and we have 500 mils of it, we're gonna say for 0.5 liters, just go ahead and convert this to liters. For every one liter, we're gonna get a 0.2 times 10 to the negative 6 moles of barium ion. Um, and if you write out this equation like this and show that it is a one-to-one -one ratio, or you could actually insert it into here, you need to show the mole ratio. So if you're going to do that, then you would write it like this. I'm going to try to do this without squishing it. I'm really sorry. I always tell my students don't squish, and here I am squishing. So the reason I wrote this is because this mole ratio, showing this mole ratio is in fact very important. Uh, they sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes they will give you points just simply for writing out the mole ratio of how these two guys relate. Um, and so calculating this out, we see that our barium concentration is 4.1 times 10 to the negative 6 molar 
very an eye on. Okay, now moving on to the second one. Uh, oh, no, we're still not done with I. Sorry. Let me erase that. So uh, we actually still have to do the chromate ion concentration. And it's going to look almost identical to what this looks like, except it's going to be... Oh, did I not go back to my pen? It's going to be 0.5 liters. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. This... This calculates out to 4.1 times 10 to the negative 6 moles of barium ion, but since it is 1 liter of solution, that means that it's also 4.1 times 10 to the negative 6 molar. If it was anything besides 1 liter, um, then we would just take this. Here. This is what it really is, and then we divide it by 1 liter, giving us our answer in molarity. If it was anything besides 1 liter, then we would just put that volume down here and then work out the calculation. Uh, so same concentration for every one liter, we're gonna get 8.2 times 10 to the negative six moles of sodium chromate. And same setup as right here for every one mole of sodium chromate, we're gonna get one mole of chromate ion. So, work this out, same number as before, 4.1 times 10 to the negative 6 moles of chromate ion, and then divide it by the volume that you have, which in this case, total volume is 1 liter, and so then it just becomes 4.1 times 10 to the negative 6 molar chromate ion. And then the last thing this question wants us to do is use those concentrations that we just figured out here and here, um, to show why a precipitate does not form. Well, our reaction that we're, it's not a reaction, the equilibrium equation is going to be the barium chromate partially ionizing into that barium ion and the chromate ion. Oh, I'm getting stuck. Sorry. It happens from time to time. My pen just goes a little crazy, gets a mind of its own. Um, and the chromate ion. So we want to know what would cause the reaction to stay entirely over here in the ions and not produce any precipitate. So the way that we can do that is the same as, as the quantitative e explanation I used up here using Q. Let's calculate what's going on right now. So Q is going to be equal to the concentration of barium ion times the concentration of the chromate ion. And it's a one-to-one -one ratio, so they're not going to have any superscripts or anything like that. And so plug this in, we get, f not again, it's very frustrating when this happens. Uh, 4.1 times 10 to the negative 6, that's the um, barium ion, and then the chromate ion is actually the same, so 4.1 times 10 to the negative 6, or you could have just put 4.1 times 10 to the negative 6 squared. And that works out to 1.7 times 10 to the negative 11. And that's where Q is. So how does Q compare to K? Well, here's K for this reaction. And so in this case, you can look at these and go, okay, well, K is bigger than Q. So K is bigger than Q, and when K is larger than Q, the reactants are favored, I mean, sorry, the products are favored and no reactants are going to be formed. So that's why there is no precipitate. And at this point, this video is already 14 minutes long. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this one quits and make y'all part two.